Tack. Tack. Hey there, and welcome back. Really excited to bring this video to you, as this one was inspired by conversations I've had with many of you through Instagram direct messages, and even comments on previous YouTube videos, and that's around the concept of, I have a long range rifle, but I don't have anywhere to stretch the legs on it, so I don't know what I'm capable of as a shooter, and I don't know what my rifle package is capable of at distance. I think you're gonna be surprised with what you're gonna see in this video. Now with that said, I believe we all have access to a 25 yard range within a reasonable drive. I grew up shooting at one outside of Atlanta, and that's where I developed a lot of the marksmanship skills that I still use today to shoot a thousand yards and beyond. So if we can all access 25 yards, I'm gonna use that as the baseline. What I'm gonna do in this video is use a stock FN SCAR 20 in 6.5 Creedmoor with an Arkin EP5 5 to 25 scope that was sent to me to use on the channel. I believe this package represents a DMR probably that many of you might own or might be looking to purchase with hopes that you can one day stretch it out to distance even though you might not be able to right now. So I believe this package, again, very representative of what many of you are probably running. So that's why I chose it. I haven't used this FN20 on the channel probably in a year or so, but I thought it'd be fun to bring it out, especially since we're gonna use it on this EP5. We're gonna see if that Arkin's gonna hold up. This is a $500-ish scope. The scars are known for heavy recoil, so the other thing we'll find out in this video is how well does the Arkin hold up. I think that's gonna be fun. But we're gonna zero this rifle at 25 yards. I've actually already done that. I shot a tiny little group stacked right in there at 25 yards. The next thing I'm gonna do, using this Winchester match ammo, I bought this earlier today, this is 140 grain. From what I can tell online, it runs the Sierra Match King bullet, which is a great bullet, very capable to 1,000 yards and beyond. But I don't have any fancy gear. I'm gonna use the velocity off the box, which is 2710. I've done some Google work to find out my ballistic coefficient, which I'm going to plug into my ballistic calculator. And then I'm going to take this rifle with 25 yard zero, box velocity, a BC that I found online, and push it out to distance and see how well we can make hits. So if you like the sounds of that, stick around. Let me know in the comments. Is this video in line with maybe your situation? Are you excited to see what we can do with a 25 yard zero out at distance? Now certainly, I don't think it's gonna be perfect. We're not gonna be making first round hits at all the distances, but I think what you're gonna see is that a 25 yard zero, box velocity, Googling a BC, a factory setup with a nice scope, is gonna be much more effective than you might imagine. So, let me know in the comments, what do you think? If you like the sounds of it, stick around. Let's start shooting. We're gonna push out on steel. I'm gonna to try to do maybe 200, 400, 600, maybe every 200 yards out to 1,000 yards so we can get an idea of where my performance drops off. So with that, let's move out to about 200 yards, set up some steel, and try to make some impacts. So I finished setting up my targets. I've got a handful of them out here, ranging from about 200 yards to a little bit over 1,000. And we're gonna shoot those using our 25 yard zero. Before we do that though, I wanted to give you a close up look at how I'm gonna set up my ballistic calculator to make those impacts at distance, so that maybe you can try this yourself. So ballistic calculator I'm using is the Shooter app by Kennedy Development Group. It's in the App Store. It costs like $10. I get a ton of questions around this. Shooter Ballistic Calculator. It's a great tool. I've been using it probably almost a decade. So if you remember, beginning of the video, I'm shooting Winchester match ammunition with the 140 SMK 6.5 Creedmoor. And according to the back of the box, it's got a muzzle velocity of 2710. Now it doesn't specify barrel length for that 2710. I'm guessing probably a 24 inch barrel. So more than likely our bullet is not gonna be flying quite that fast, but I'm not gonna use my chronograph. We're just gonna go with that box velocity of 2710. So when I'm in my ballistic calculator, I've already got the FN SCAR 20, 6.5 Creedmoor set up. When you set that up, it's gonna choose barrel twist, optic height over bore, et cetera. So that's already in there. I'm gonna go into my ammo section and I'm gonna go into the settings for this Winchester 140 SMK match load and show you what I've done. So you can actually, through the shooter app, pull in a bullet profile. That's kind of what I did to get started, but just so you can have a look at what I did. Bullet diameter is 0.264, weight 140 grain. Bullet length was not pulled in automatically, so I Googled the bullet length of a 140 SMK and came up with 1.31 inches. Muzzle velocity 2710, 
which we have on the back of the box. So we're just going to use that. Velocity variation, I put in 15 feet per second. No ammo is perfectly uh, the same, so there's going to be some variation. I just threw in 15 as a starting point. Keep coming down, drag model, G1. So I'm going to use the G1 ballistic coefficient, and the reason I'm going to do that is I was able to find online through Sierra's website their ballistic coefficient for this bullet. So you can see it's 0 0.535 down to 2,800 feet per second. So we're not even going to get there with this round. Then it's 0 0.526 down to 2,000 feet per second, and then below that, 0.521. It's going to be really interesting to see how close this G1BC that I pulled off the internet is to what we actually have out of our rifle. And then you can see zero range. I put in 25 yards. That's where I zeroed earlier. Shot a beautiful group right in the bullseye there at 25 yards. So I'd call that a good zero. And then the atmosphere information, I'm at about 1,250 feet. Temperature's about 75 degrees to 80 or so right now. And humidity, I don't know what it actually is, but 40% sounds good. So that's what we're going to use for the bullet profile. Let me save that. And then my first target down there that we'll look at, let's say is 380 yards. It's actually a 10 inch circle. So let me throw in 380 yards. What you're going to see is 380, I actually have to dial down 0.6 mils. And the reason for that, if you've seen in my battle zero videos, when I zero at 25 yards, the bullet actually has to climb to meet the line of sight. So it's climbing to meet the line of sight. It's not defined gravity, it's just the barrel is aimed up versus line of sight. So it comes up to meet at 25 yards, and then it stays above line of sight for some time until it comes back down. So at the closer distances, say 200, and in this example, 380, we're actually gonna have to dial down to make those impacts. And then my next target out there is a two-thirds ipsic at 550, where you'll see I actually have to dial up one mil. So this is gonna be kind of fun to see how close this calculator is to reality. Now with that, Let's start shooting. First up, a 45% EPSIC at 250 yards. My app is calling for dialing down 1.6 mils for this shot. Now remember, that's because my bullet had to climb to meet my line of sight. So I'm above line of sight, so I have to dial down to make this impact. So 250, not much wind, I'll just hold dead on. Pack. Back. Really easy work, 250 yards off this tripod. Let's push out further. Let's give that 10 inch plate at 380 yards a go. Remember my app called for dialing down 0.6 mils. I'll go ahead and do that now. There's a slight left to right out there, so I'm gonna favor left edge of plate. So that went over it. I'm going to call that a half. So let's go down. That was down four tenths. That's a full mill down from our 100 yard or 25 yard zero. Impact. 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 So that's three hits there at 380 and I am a mil below my 25 yard zero. So I had to dial down to make that impact. Next up, let's transition over to our 550 yard target. So that's a two thirds ipsic out there. And remember my app was calling for one mil of elevation. Now I've dialed that on. And we'll start by holding a half to the left. All right, so that went over about a half. So let's go down a half. When did it look good? Impact. 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 So we're 0.5 up from our 25 yard zero to make those impacts out there at 550. You got to be able to spot your misses. Next up, we'll push out 
I believe my next blade is out there at 735. Next target is a two-third Zipsic out there at about 735. So we'll move over there. My app was calling for 3.1. I'll go ahead and dial that on. And we'll see where we land here. My wind flag out there is pretty still. Let's see. It's pretty calm here at the shooting position as well. Flag is pushing a little bit left to right. Let me hold left a half. All right, so right over the head about 0.6. So let's go down. There's down 0.6. Let's hold that same half left. So just off the left edge. All right, dead on. Back. Low left. Pack. And pack. And pack. So we had to come down 0.6 mils to connect. A dead hold with the wind. Make an easy work of it. Let's push out to 850 yards. Let's try a full size Ipsic at 850 yards. Now my app is calling for 4.6 mils from my 25 yard zero. I'll dial that on. We'll see, it'll probably land high based on the trend we've been seeing, but we'll give it a go. This first round, the wind flag is pushing straight back. I'm just gonna go dead on with it, windage wise. Yep, right over the head. Let's come down 0.6. That's four mils over. Impact on the left edge. Impact in the belly. Impact on the left edge. Impact on the right edge. So we're down 0.6 from what the app called for, but we're making solid impacts on a full size Ipsic. From there, we'll push out to the full size Ipsic at 1033. Full size Ipsic at 1033. My app calls for 7.5. So I'll go ahead and dial that on. We'll see if that trend of a half needed to take out continues, but for now, Let's give it a go. Man, a windage. Here at the shooting position, seems to be coming from my back. My wind flag out there is pushing just a little bit left to right. Now straight back. Let's just go with a dead hole and see what happens. Ooh, way to the right. Let's come a half to the left. Pack. Let's come down two tenths. Keep that half to the left. Okay, a quarter to the left. Impact. Impact. Uh, 
that. Ooh, dropped a little bit low, but windows look good. Same spot. Come back up a tent. Impact. So that actually was really close to the calculator, 7.4 mils down a tenth from what the calculator called for. I believe that was like maybe five hits out of 10. 50% is pretty solid. Let's wrap up. I'll give you my thoughts about running a 25 yard zero all the way out to a little over a thousand yards. So that's the end of the shooting. Let's move into a quick review around my experience running this SCAR with a 25 yard zero out to a thousand yards. Now, if you remember, we opened this video with a question around, I have a precision rifle, but I only have access to a 25 yard range. What's it actually capable of at distance? How easily could I connect with this rifle in the event that I got a chance to shoot it out to distance at some point in the future? Well, after watching this one, I hope you have a better idea of what performance might look like. So let's talk about what happened and what I saw running a 25 yard zero on this 6.5 SCAR out to a thousand yards. So earlier in the video, you saw me get a solid 25 yard zero on the rifle, felt really good, five rounds stacked right into the bullseye. So very confident in that 25 yard zero. Then we moved into a piece where I showed you the ballistic calculator. I took the velocity off the box of the Winchester 140 match ammunition, plugged that in, plugged in the BC that I found online, and came up with my drop chart. And that's what I used throughout the video. We then moved down, our first target was at 250 yards, that was a 45% EPSIC, and we connected 100% of the time. No problems making impacts on that target. That target I'll show you in another clip. It's decently small, but it's quite generous really for 250 yards. But if you're not experienced in long range, that would make a great target for 250 yards. It's a challenge, but very capable of making hits, and we saw that, we went 100%. Then we pushed out to 380 yards on a 10 inch circle, which is a decent challenge for 380. That's a little bit over 2 MOA for that target. And we connected on, I believe all rounds, except for maybe the first where we splashed high. So at 380 yards, I noticed my point of impact landing about 0.5 high versus what my ballistics calculator called for. So I corrected that, I removed that 0.5 and then we stacked them right into that 10 inch plate. So really no problem there. 550, we moved out and shot a two-thirds IPSC where again we saw the trend of my point of impact landing about 0.5 mil high versus what the calculator called for. So I pulled that 0.5 out and we connected very easily on a two-thirds IPSC at 550. Again, not a tiny target, but very realistic for a DMR type rifle at that distance. So challenging, but still capable of making hits and we saw that. Then we moved out to a two-thirds IPSC at 730 or 735 yards where we made plenty of hits, but again, we saw the impact be about a half mil high, maybe 0.6, I had to take that out, and then we stacked in those impacts. So we noticed a trend beyond 250 yards where I was a little bit high, I had to take that out and make my hits. 850 yards, same trend, first round flew high, took out 0.5 or 0.6 and landed the next four on the full size Zipsic. Then we moved out to 1,030 yards where we went five for 10, had a little bit of challenge out there. Maybe it was me, maybe it was the wind, I'm not sure. 50% hit ratio with a 6.5 Creedmoor from a prone position on a full size Ipsic isn't great shooting, but I hit half the time basically. So I'm okay with that. But with that, what did we see? At 1,030 yards when I shot prone, my drop very closely matched the calculator. So if you noticed, 250 I was good, 1000 I was good, in the middle I was a little bit high and had to take that out. So something was a little bit off in either my ballistics that I was pulling out of my calculator, my zero, maybe a tracking issue in the scope, I wasn't sure. So happy with that performance, I believe I demonstrated that with a 25 yard zero, decent marksmanship fundamentals, the ability to spot your impact, you will make hits when you get a chance to stretch out a distance. It's really not that hard unless you're trying to shoot tiny targets. But as I started shooting and noticing that trend of my bullet landing high, I had to know why that was. So I moved back down to 25 yards and I wanted to test a couple different things. So the first thing I wanted to test was my velocity. So my box velocity was 2710. 
I ran four rounds across the chronograph and measured those four rounds at about 2660. So my velocity was actually slower than the box called for, which makes sense given I'm shooting a 20 inch barrel and I bet that box was a 24 inch barrel velocity. So velocity a little bit slower and in theory that would have required more elevation, not less. So velocity wasn't the answer. Then I wanted to check this Arkin optic. This is my first time out with an Arkin, maybe a little bit more of a budget friendly optic. So I decided at 25 yards, I had my zero. I dialed on eight mils, which is more than I dialed at all out here today. Fired two rounds, and those two rounds stacked right in perfectly, eight mils above my point of aim. So I don't believe there's any tracking issue in the arc and scope. I believe eight mils, it did that perfectly, and that's more than I used out here. So I ruled out velocity and tracking. The last question I have in my mind, and I'd love to hear from you guys, I'm wondering, did the tripod put some kind of point of impact shift in the rifle? I'm just starting to shoot off tripods. This is a new one that I have. It's actually a Sunway photo. Really love shooting off this tripod. It's very sturdy. I believe you saw that in the film. I was able to make hits off the tripod out to 800 yards, 850 yards, really with no issue. It's a lot of fun to shoot off the tripod, especially out here in the dry conditions. It gets me up off the ground, takes a little bit of that dust out of my face. So love shooting off the tripod, but I need to spend a little bit more time trying to figure out, is there a slight difference in my prone zero versus a tripod zero? And I'd love to hear from you guys. Is that something you're seeing? Could that have been maybe the difference that I saw in those targets in the intermediate distances where I was shooting off the tripod in the half mil high. Then I went back prone at 1,030 and I was very close to the calculator. So in summary, I believe we showed in this video, if you only have access to 25 yards, you can be more than effective with your precision rifle with just a little bit of marksmanship skill and a little bit of know-how, things to look for, how to get a proper position and an understanding of how to use your ballistic app and what that bullet flight is going to look like out of your rifle. So with that said, I need to wrap up my thoughts on this Arkin. These are my first, say, 100 rounds for this Arkin Optic. This is about a $500 scope. This is the EP5, 5 to 25, and I tell you what, I am really impressed with this Optic. I had no problem shooting out to 1,000 yards. I had no problem spotting my impacts. You saw that in the trigger cam. It was very easy to see that dust splash. The color looked good. I believe it tracked very well given the quick tracking test that I did. Really happy with this Arkin scope. You'll see more of this in the video. I purposely put it on this scar to see if it would handle the recoil. And 100 rounds in, we're doing good. So more to come from Arkin. Let me know what you thought about this video. If you like this kind of content, I hope that you'll help me grow this channel by liking the video, commenting to let me know your thoughts. What did you think? What would you like to see maybe in a future video? Did this video align with maybe your thoughts and your questions? Did this help answer maybe some of the questions you've got around your own setup? If so, I'd love to hear how. And finally, if you like this kind of content, I'd ask that you help me grow this channel. And the best way to do that is to subscribe for future videos. If you subscribe to this channel, you'll be in line for my next video drop. We just crossed over 30,000 subscribers, and I thank each and every one of you that have taken the time to watch my content and support the video. With that, don't forget to check me out on Instagram at Mountains Mullets America. It's a great place for us to interact. Sneak peek of what I'm working on, a ton of great conversations that I've had with many of you. So, Thanks for watching. Hope you'll stick around. Check me out on my next video.